Paucio rode his 20th winner of the season on Bright Oasis in the Cleef Hill Handicap Chase at Cheltenham. Bright Oasis challenged Dumper, ridden by John Frankham, at the last fence. Bright Oasis takes it up now from Dumper. And it's John Frankham and Paul Croucher now at the last. They jump it together. Bright Oasis on the far side, Dumper on the near side, Paul Croucher and John Frankham. They've got it between them, racing into the closing stages. Bright Oasis going away from Dumper, going to win it very cleverly indeed. A double for Paul Croucher at the line. Bright Oasis, the winner, second is Dumper and third Virgin Soldier with... The favourites in the Bradstone Mandarin handicap chase at Newbury. The two fancied horses, Approaching and Tarbank, both failed to finish. From the start, the race was between Venture to Cognac and Earthstopper. Just one fence left to jump now. Earthstopper on the near side. Venture to Cognac on the far side. George Sloan and Oliver Sher with the two amateurs at the final fence. Earthstopper lands in the lead there from Venture to Cognac. And as they race into the closing stages, it's Earthstopper now getting the upper hand of Venture to Cognac. And as they race into the closing stages, Earthstopper is going to win the Bradston Mandarin handicap chase. And as they come to the line, it's Earthstopper from Venture to Cognac. Venture to Cognac challenging again, but he won't get there. Earthstopper is the winner. Venture to Cognac is second and Sailor's Return is third. The prices Earth Stopper was nine to two, Venture to Cognac six to one, and third, Sailor's Return. There was a small but high class feel for the Geoffrey Fear Stakes. The Ascot Gold Cup winner, Ardross, a fine stayer, was trying to win over a shorter than usual distance to assess his chances for the French classic, the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, later in the year. The commentator, Julian Wilson. And a half to go, and it's Ardross and Castle Keep, and Castle Keep's looking best of all as Ardross comes under pressure. But as Lester asks, Ardross answers. Riberetto's coming on the outside now, but it's Ardross, and it, Ardross has got the whip hand now as Lester Bigot looks over his shoulder. He's got a lead of two or three lengths. He's going away from Castle Keep, and Riberetto cut above his beaten. And this is Ardross winning like a really good horse. He's quickening away in the last furlong to win three, four lengths. Ardross going away to win in style. At the line, Ardross wins. It castle keeps second, cut above his third, Ribretto fourth. And Ardross picked up £24,000 for the win. 4,000th taking... race in Britain, almost 34 years to the day since his first win. Ardross gave him an easy victory at Newbury in the Geoffrey Freer Stakes. Julian Wilson takes up the commentary. But Lester's got a lead of two, two and a half lengths, and riding on a long rein, looks over his shoulder, a long searching look over his right shoulder, because Ardross has got this race by the scruff of its neck. Baffins in second, Easter Sun is third, but the crowd are rising to Ardross. Listen to the crowd, cheering him as he strides away. What a way for Lester Bigot to ride his 4,000th winner at the line. Ardross, a brilliant winner of the Jeffrey Freer Stakes, as photo for second between Baffin and Easter Except Sun. So, the Panama Cigar Quality qualifier, a fast pace was set by those horses coming into hurdles from racing on the flat. It led to a storming finish described by Peter O'Sullivan. And they're running down to the second last now and still a wide open race landing board from Badsworth Girl. Valiso right down to the stands, rails with Comanty and Dragon Palace and over that one Comanty landed just in the lead but made a mistake there. Valiso now on the near side. It's Valiso, Comanty, Dragon Palace landing board and Badsworth Girl over on the far side. Still a wide open race. Valiso on the inner, Badsworth Girl on the far side. Dragon Palace and landing board in, in touch and Valiso landed in the lead there. It's Valiso on the near side from landing board and Badsworth Girl as they race into the closing stages. Valiso from landing board and as they race up towards the line Valiso is going to win at last and at the line Valiso is the winner and landing board is second Dragon Palace is third. Joint favourite Loondale surged forward. Peter O'Sullivan describes the exciting finish. And making good progress now is Political Pop as they come down to the second last. Shady Deal lands in the lead from Diamond Edge and straight Jocelyn Political Pop. And then comes Leslie Ann and it's Diamond Edge, 11 stone, 10 top weight with the advantage now as they come to the final fence. Diamond Edge from Shady Deal on the far side. Political Pop coming there very strongly over the last. Diamond Edge lands in the lead from Political Pop and a follow there. Leslie Ann and racing into the closing stages. It's Diamond Edge from Political Pop. And a big weight difference here, 18 pounds. Diamond Edge from Political Pop and Diamond Edge is holding Political Pop. And Fulk Warwin wins his seventh Hennessy at the line. Diamond Edge has won it. Political Pop is second and third straight. Jocelyn, four games. Diamond Edge won it by half a length. It was trainer Six Fulk Warwin. And 49. Well, now racing, and there was a thrilling finish to today's big race, the Mackeson Gold Cup at Cheltenham. Coming into the second last fence, Artifice was left with a commanding advantage but the picture was to change dramatically. Peter O'Sullivan takes up the story. 
And it's Artifice a long way clear. Artifice, who unshipped his rider back in 1979, is coming to win the Magasin Gold Cup if he stands up at the last. Artifice is well clear of $50 more who's second. Artifice in the lead from $50 more. Artifice lands well. $50 more jumps in second. Wayward Lair jumps in third. Tackroy four and racing into the closing stages. It's Artifice with $50 more in second. $50 more is putting in a tremendous run, but Artifice is still holding him. As they come to the line, it's Artifice with $50 more putting in a tremendous run to get up and win it. $50 more has got up to win it from Artifice and Wayward. So the full result, first, number four, $50 more, 11 to one. Second, number six, Artifice, 92. Third, number one, Wayward Lad, the nine to four favorite. Incidentally, joint champion jockey John Frankham, whom you saw there come to grief on Winter's other runner, Observe, suffered bruised biceps and gave up his subsequent rides. Well, other news now, and uh, four league yeah, players... Sent ...worth over £30,000 the winner. Uh, there are a lot of them with a chance as we join them with just over two hurdles to go. Commentator Peter O'Sullivan. Coming down now to the second glass now, and as they do so, it's Lumen from No Bombs and Gay George still coming there strongly, and Baron Blakeney on the stand side, and Royal Vulcan just in behind them. Secret Pallet over on the far side, and as they jumped that one, it was uh, Gay George a faller. Well, he was almost on the floor, but he's out of it, jumped his way right out of it there with a terrible blunder, and Secret Pallet coming there very strongly on the far side to take it up now as they come down to the final flight. Secret Pallet in the lead from Lumen and Migrator, then comes No Bombs, and then Royal Vulcan at the final flight. Secret Pallet's going to jump it in the lead. Jumps in a leg clear of Lumen in second in right radar. Then no bombs and Wolf Vulcan and then Capitano and racing into the closing stages. It's Secret Ballot from Lumen and then Mike Rader. Capitano putting in a great run, but Secret Ballot's going to hold them all as they come to the line. And at the line, Secret Ballot wins it. Mike Rader was second. It's a photo for third. And the photograph for third showed that Capitano was third and Lumen fourth. The full result, Secret Ballot the winner, 10 to 1. Second, Mike Grater, 20 to 1. Third, Capitano at 16 to 1. And fourth, Lumen at 20 to 1. Well, it's a big day of racing today. A roundup now of the results. Head on 345, Peter the Butcher, 12 to 1. Cap 2, 9 to 2. Padsky, 20 to 1. 415, Battle Him, 100 to 30 on favourite. Western Hero, 33 to 1. Central Carpets, 20 to 1. 445, Cornishman, 7 to 1. High Rainbow, 7 to 4 favourite. Prow, 5 to 2. Doncaster, 315. La Fontaine, 11 to 8 favourite. Buzzards Bay, 3 to 1. Sula Bula, 9 to 1. 345, Bossa Nova Boy, 14 to 1. Rafi James, 2 to 1 favourite. Retarius, 10 to 1. 415, Steel Charger, 11 to 4 favourite. Never Talk, 8 to 1. Street Market, 11 to 2. 4.45, Abdoon, 11 to 2, Fitzpatrick, 5 to 1, Muslab, 4 to 1. Miguel Clemente was withdrawn, and Rule 4 applies, 10 pence in the pound deducted. Kempton, 3.30, Tug of Love, 8 to 1, Sauvage, 9 to 2 joint favourite, Greenwood Star, 11 to 1. 4 o'clock, Pernima, 2 to 1 favourite, Spanish Point, 15 to 2, Town Flyer, 5 to 1. 4.30, Criterion, 11 to 8 on favourite, his turn, 33 to 1. Ever great, 33 to 1. Warwick, 315. Duran, 2 to 1 favourite. Traditional Miss, 3 to 1. Brave Maiden, 16 to 1. 345. Henceforth, 7 to 4 favourite. Ominous, 5 to 2. Express Empress, 7 to 1. 415. Out of hand, 50 to 1. On the spot, 11 to 1. Coastline, 40 to 1. The 445. Game. And today, he scored all four in Aldershot's 4-0 win over Hereford. And there was plenty of excitement in the King George VI chase at Kempton this afternoon. A 20-length lead by Anna Glogg's daughter turned into a neck-and-neck -neck battle between three horses in the closing stages. Peter Bromley is the commentator. Silverback has Night Nurse again as a challenger. Night Nurse, persistent on the stand side, but Silverback has the lead at the last. Silverback, Night Nurse is down! Night Nurse is down at the last. Anna Gloves Gordon is the first year. Tommy Carmody nearly falls off. Perhaps he'll now put his stirrups down a bit. But Silverback is going to win it. Silverback wins for the second year running by about five lengths from Anna Gloves Daughter. Diamond Edge runs on to be third, staying on. So a victory for the second year running for Silver Buck and the third year in a row for jockey Tommy Carmody. Anna Glog's daughter was second at 5-1 to one and Diamond Edge third at 11-4. to four. Set in the King George VI steeplechase at Kempton. The favourite Desert Orchid, who's won the hearts of thousands of racegoers, was beaten into second place by Nupsala, an outsider from France. 
Desert Orchid was in front with three fences to go, but then faded. And Desert Orchid looks beaten for Gibbon to get back in third place. They come down towards the second last. The pace had proved too much for the favourite, and when second placed Forgive and Forget fell at the last, the French challenger romped home by 15 lengths. But this King George a six round chase and up the line, Napsala is the winner. Napsala the winner. First, Napsala 25 to 1. Second, Desert Orchid, Evans' favourite. Third, Golden Friend 20 to, to 1. Graham Good is the commentator. Two, one more finish the jump. And Mary Master comes to take it a tired horse and run for free. Gets momentum away from the fence. But it's run for free and Mary Master dueling up towards the line. Neither horse is going to give in. But it's going to be run for free. The top weight who lifted in the dying strides. A dramatic race run for free from Mary Master. 15... So the full SP. First, run for free, 6 to 1. Second, Merry Master, 28 to 1. Third, Mr. Ed, 12 to 1. And fourth was Eshaness at 14. In two games, and more to come on Monday, perhaps, at Swansea. In the big race at Haydock, the Valspa paints handicap, the favourite, Cordite Spear, romped home to give Tony Clark his third win of the week. At the home turn, Cordite Spear was back marker, and the leaders looked hard to catch until the three furlong post. Peter Sullivan Bloody takes up the commentary. Prince being pressed by Cesarini, then Brookline, then comes Baruch, then Felport Pariner towards the near side, being chased by Cordite Spear, who's improving now. And it's Cesarini in the centre, and Felthorpe Mariner who struck the front now. Felthorpe Mariner is going on from Cordite Spear, challenging. Regal Man is coming there strongly, and it's Cordite Spear and Felthorpe Mariner now as they race into the closing stages. Cordite Spear on the near side, Felthorpe Mariner on the far side, Tony Clark bidding for a double here and looking as though he's going to achieve it. Cordite Spear going away from Felthorpe Mariner. Spanish Bull is finishing well, but Cordite Spear is going to hold them. And as they race up towards the line, Cordite Spear wins it well, and Spanish Bull is second, and it's a photo for third. Between... First, Cordite Spear, 15 to 8 favourite. Second, Spanish Pool, 8 to 1. Third was Felthorpe Mariner, in fact, £80,000. His Mount Zeno had an exciting tussle with wind and weathering right to the post. Peter Bromley describes the finish. And it is wind and weathering from the Frenchman Zeno. And these two are just going ahead of Dara Monarch as they come down into the dip. It's wind and weathering from Zeno. Dara Monarch, Tender King coming late over on the far side. Then comes Hayes. The far side group have it. The leader on the stand side is Silverhawk, but he's got a lot to do. And it's wind and weathering and Zeno. And Zeno and France coming through to take it up from wind and weathering. Tender King coming late, but it's wind and weathering from Zeno and Tender King running on strongly in the final stages. It's Rockamador. 25 yards to go. And it's Zeno. And Zeno's Richer handicap and tomorrow's Prix de Lac de Triomphe make it a good weekend for racing. This afternoon, a big field of 29 started in the Cambridgeshire and they were still bunched together at the finish. Peter Bromley takes up the commentary with about two furlongs left to run. It's King's Glory and Buffer Vento on the far side. Century City coming through on the stand side with Orotevo and Fine Sun. And the leading group now is headed by Century City and Orotevo. They're followed by Indian Trail. Fine Sun on the stand side. Socks up trying to get through. They come to the last 50 yards now. And they come to the last furlong rather. And it's Century City, Orotevo and Indian Trail. Century City in the centre. Indian Trail on the far side. Orotevo running on. Coming through on the stand side is Fine Sun. But it's now Century City from Indian Trail. Oratevo and Fine Sun. Century City at 20 to 1 won it. Proved a virtue in the Cesaro which at Newmarket. He came from behind to win on the 14 to 1 chance, Holsbury. Coming inside the final furlong, military band, Hylian, with Halsbury finishing strongly. Then Donegal Prince on the far rails, but inside the final furlong, and Halsbury comes in to take it up, but Hylian finishing strongly on the far side. And it's, it's Halsbury with the lead from Hylian in second place. Coming up towards and the starting price is Halsbury 14 to 1, Hylian 14 to 1, military band 11 to 2, Donegal Prince to the second of the season's classics, the 2,000 guineas at Newmarket. In the closing stages, three horses were disputing the lead. Peter Bromley is the commentator. As they come to the dip, it is Bell Bow Lider, two of Glory Moo and Matterboy, the three are in line from Raja Padang and Cutthroat. And as they meet the rising ground, it's Matterboy in the centre. Bell Bow Lider, two of Glory Moo on the stand side. Two of Glory Moo just moving through, but Matterboy is holding him. And now two of Glory Moo gets into top gear. And two of Glory Moo wins the guineas from Matterboy and Bell Bow Lider. Cutthroat comes next. Two of Glory Moo has won it. Only just. Two of Glory Moo was the five to two favourite. Matterboy, 50 to one. 
and Bell Racing Berlay. and George Duffield rode the last four winners at Catrick for a 634 to 1 accumulator, and Lester Piggott had a 104 to 1 treble at Newbury to increase his lead in the Jockeys' Championship to 37. Also at Newbury, the two year old Horage lost his unbeaten record after nine straight wins when he was beaten into fourth place behind one of Piggott's winners, Salieri, in the Mill Reef Stakes. Billy Nunes, described by Peter Bromley. Cut loose and time charter trying to get on turn. They're two furlongs out and Last Feather who comes under the whip in the lead from on the stand side slightly dangerous but Steve Cawthon and Last Feather from slightly dangerous and time charter. It's a desperately close thing and slightly dangerous and Last Feather are the leaders and slightly dangerous now takes the lead. Time charter running on and time charter just takes the lead from slightly dangerous and Last Feather. 25 yards to go. Time charter wins the oak in second place slightly dangerous. Last Feather is third. Awasi is fourth. And the result again, Time Charter, the winner, collects 97,000. At Newbury in the Mill Reef Stakes, there was a fine finish to the six furlong sprint. Our commentator, Peter O'Sullivan. Racing down into the final furlong, Sweet Monday on the far side, Matterboy on the near side, and it's Sweet Monday with the advantage now from Matterboy and Paul Dew. Sweet Monday from Matterboy and Paul Dew as they race up towards the line. Sweet Monday from Matterboy and Paul Dew, that looks as though how they're going to finish. Sweet Monday racing clear as they come up towards the line. Sweet Monday wins it from Matterboy in second and Paul Dew third. So Sweet Monday a clear winner with Lester Piggott on Matterboy a good second. High Rise, ridden by Olivier Pellier, has won the 219th Derby at Epsom. In one of the best finishes for years, the unfancied Colt did just enough to hold off City Honours. Will Warden reports. Derby day, and as ever, the downs were crowded. But in front of a royal audience, the 219th Derby, which pre-race had been all about the Philly Cape Verde, was about to produce a big shock. Derby. From the start to Epsom's famous Tattenham Corner, an outsider, Sunshine Street, had made all the running, and as one outsider faded, another took up the running. With less than a furlong to go, it was between City Honours and High Rise. It's High Rise who's edging on, and High Rise City Honours fights back on the line, and it's High Rise City Honours 1 and 2. A first derby win then for the exuberant French champion jockey Olivier Pellier. Hallelujah! <laughs> High Rise had been the only undefeated horse in the field. Tonight, the Colt still is after winning racing's greatest classic. Will Walden, ITN Sport. Well, in the big race of the day, Willie Carson on the five to one shot Azilfi won the £40,000 Geoffrey Freer Strakes at Newbury. Azilfi led from the start, but he came under a strong challenge in the closing stages from the four other runners. Carson managed to hold on, beating the favorite Sonus into third place. And the final SP, first Azilfi at 5 to 1, second Assessor also at 5 to 1, and third Sonus, the 11 to 8 favourite. Well, before the results, just a reminder of some of the big close season transfers. The biggest, of course, for 14 years to win the Grand National. There was an anxious wait before a steward's inquiry confirmed the result. Peter Staunton reports from entry. Just 28 runners came to the line for the cleanest of starts. But if it was a small field, it produced a thrilling race. And despite the traditional cavalry charge around the first circuit, there were surprisingly few fallers. By the end, though, it was down to just two, Onko and Purr being tracked relentlessly by the favourite, Rough Quest. And then the moment of controversy, as Quest stormed into the lead, nudging the fading Onko du Purr on the way. Rough Quest passed the line to the delight of the entry punters. But as jockey Mick Fitzgerald led him in, the stewards were beginning their inquiry. If it was accidental, I think two tired horses at the end of four and a half miles. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But Rough Quest's moment of glory was delayed by just ten minutes. I, I don't think I've ever been a striking in all my life. You know, it's one thing to win a national, but then have gives me the chance of having it taken away. It's horrific, you know, and it's, it feels like 10 days, not 10 minutes. So a dramatic finale to the national and a happy ending for Rough Quest. And for once, the biggest lottery in racing went with the form book. Peter Staunton, ITN, Aintree. The race to stay in the Premiership is nearing the final furlong. Racing, Steve Cawthon rode oh so sharp to victory in the St. Ledger for his fourth classic win of the season. It was the third for the filly and her trainer, Henry Cecil, took his prize money for the season to more than a million pounds. Peter Bromley is the commentator. 
They're coming now to the last furlong. And oh so sharp has taken the lead. Lanfranco comes under the whip. Fardanti running on strongly. Nemain is getting into the act. And the filly has the lead. Oh so sharp. Oh so sharp and Steve Cawthon from Fardanti and Nemain who's finishing fast. Lanfranco is beaten. Oh so sharp is going to hold on. She's a half a length up. Oh so sharp is the winner. And in second place comes Fardanti and Lanfranco. Nemain is only four. Finally, the 335 at Goodwood had a surprise entrant this afternoon. It was an amateur jockey, Princess Anne, racing for only the second time. Her mount, Little Sloop, began the race as 8 to 1 joint third favourite. But although the Princess led the field at the start, she couldn't sustain her challenge coming into the final straight. Peter O'Sullivan is to the, the commentator. To the long pole, spring in my step with the advantage from Silk Imp, then comes... Just in behind them, Zai, as they race up uh, towards the line, though, it's Spring in My Step who's gone well clear. Spring in My Step, the winner. Zai is second, third. So, sixth place for Princess Anne. In her previous race at Epsom in April, she finished The fourth. flat season's last big race, the Cesarevich, was run at Newmarket this afternoon. There were 31 runners for what's the second leg of the autumn double. That's the biggest field since 1968. And there was an upset for the favourite, Hasten to Add. Graham Good describes the closing stages. But look at this, Hasten to Add, the grey is rallying. My patriarch, Hasten to Add. Brito down the centre with a track. But our say, lad, John Williams is absolutely flying. It's Brito and our say, lad. It's at the point, at the line, it's a photo. Oh, our say, lad and Brito, our say, lad and Brito. The full SP then, first our say, lad at 12 to 1. Second, Rito, also 12 to 1. Third, My Desire at 33 to 1 and fourth, hasten to add the three to one favourite. The day's richest race, worth almost a quarter of a million pounds, was the champion stakes at Newmarket, won by the five to two favourite Hatouf. Second was Ezud at eight to one, and third, Dernier Emperor at seven to one. And that's the news and sport tonight. Our favourite Seymour Business continued his impressive form at Newbury this afternoon. At last year's Gold Cup winner finished some 18 lengths clear of the field in the Aon Chase. Meanwhile, a 15 to 2 shot, Gios won the big race of the day at Newbury, the Tote Gold Trophy. Ridden by Mick Fitzgerald, Gios finished ahead Copeland in second place and hit and run in third. That season, the Lincoln Handicap at Doncaster. As they entered the final furlong, the race was between John Reed on Star of a Gunner and Pat Eddery's mount, Mystical Man. Peter Bromley is the commentator. Over on the far side is Mystical Man being chased by Star of a Gunner. Then comes x hard Gold Prospect and Well Rigged. The far side have it, coming through on the stand side. Very, very fast indeed, is made shot. But it's Star of a Gunner now that takes over in the lead. Star of a Gunner, the winner. Star of a Gunner was first at 9-1, to one, Vague Shot second, the favourite Gold Prospect. Gold champions tonight. It tells the true story of how the jockey Bob Champion battled against cancer and recovered to ride to victory in the Grand National. The Queen Mother's deep affection for racing is well known, and so too is her admiration for Bob Champion. She talked at length to the former jockey before taking her seat in the cinema, and to the actor who plays him, John Hurt. The film tells the story of Bob Champion's courageous and successful fight against cancer, from the moment the disease was diagnosed in 1979 to the day less than two years later when he won the Grand National on Alderniti. And the glitter of tonight's occasion was in sharp contrast to the long and painful ordeal which Champion endured. He was sustained only by his determination to ride again, a determination he shared with Joe, the lady who later married him. I brought you something. It's a big one. Had to be light. It's for when you start riding again. And Champion did start riding again. Fifteen months after leaving hospital, he rode Alderniti to one of the most memorable victories in racing history. A highly popular victory by two highly respected champions. And the idea for a feature film was born. And the Irish 1,000 guineas at the Curragh. His victory comes a week after he was in trouble for a mistake at Lingfield. And today he received another ban for five days, this time for wearing the wrong type of jockey's cap. 
With the derby just a fortnight away, the 53-year-old had hinted that he would retire, but there were no doubts about his confidence on Mattia. The filly, trained by Ben Hambury, took up the running three furlongs from home for an easy win. And Colin Jackson, Linford Christie, Tessa Sarneson, Diane Madal and John Richard. ...bid by Mr Flood. Gary Lloyd has the details. It was the auction of a promising bay called Sulafa, under blue colours on the left here, upon which the case turned. At a prestigious Tattersall sale in Newmarket, a bid for the colt, reared by royal trainer Henry Cecil, reached 430,000 guineas. That bid, said the judge, came from Irish gambler James Flood, and he had no intention of paying. Mr Flood claimed he'd stopped bidding at 410,000 guineas and promptly disappeared. Two days later, Sulafa was re-auctioned and sold to Sheikh Hamdan al Makhdum of Dubai for only 200,000 guineas, less than half the price. The Colt's original owners, a Liechtenstein company called Alchemy International, said Tattersalls were negligent. They said the Colt should have been re-auctioned the same day. But Mr Justice Hurst cleared Tattersalls of negligence and said their witnesses were honest and straightforward. He couldn't say the same of James Flood, whom he branded a bombastic liar and a braggart. The judge said Mr Flood almost boasted he was a gambling cheat. He did bid 430,000 guineas, he refused to identify himself afterwards, and he absconded with the greatest possible haste. The judge ordered him to pay the difference in price, 230,000 guineas with interest. There were two big surprises. Champion hurdle which featured a clash between three of the best hurdlers in training. Bidding for a hat-trick in the race was the redoubtable Sea Pigeon who started favourite at 6-5. to five. He was opposed by Bird's Nest under a cloud at the beginning of the season but who came back to winning form at Liverpool. Also in the field was Kaibo considered unlucky at Cheltenham when falling at the second last. John Penny describes the finish of today's race. Of hurdle to jump. Winter Melody, who's been disputing it with Kaibo on the inner. Sound, These two continue to make it as they come now towards the second last. Winter Melody with the noseband. Kaibo on the far side. And then comes Bird's Nest, Sea Pigeon, and Prasto. They've got about a quarter of a mile still to run, and Bird's Nest now is a danger. But it's Kaibo who's taking it up. They run now towards the final flight. Kaibo in the lead from Bird's Nest. Sea Pigeon also unleashing a run towards the stand side. This is the final flight, and it's Kaibo over in the lead. Strongly pressed from Bird's Nest. Sea Pigeon trying hard to put in an attack, but it's Kaibo holding Bird's Nest. But Bird's Nest now taking up the advantage, and they've got about 100 yards still to go. And it's Bird's Nest in the lead from Kaibo on the far side. Sea Pigeon on the near side as they come up towards the line. Bird's Nest and Andy Turnell in victory in the Scottish champion hurdle. And we apologise for the sound. In victory for the favourite, one in a million, who remains unbeaten. The commentator at Newmarket is Peter Bromley. And it is one in a million who's clear of Jubilee, Yanuka, Lyric Dance, Devon Ditty, and then comes Topsy and Pitasia as they meet the rising ground. They've got a furlong to go, and it's one in a million with Jubilee closing the gap. Yanuka's coming late on the scene on the stand side, so too is Topsy, and also finishing well is Abbeydale. They've got a hundred yards to go, and one in a million is holding on from fast finishing Abbeydale, who's second, Yanuka is third, Topsy is fourth, Devon Ditty fifth, then Jubilee, Pitasia, and Lyric Dance. The odds, one in a million evens, Abbeydale 25 to 1, and Yanuka 33 to 1. Another length and a half to Troy, then Swiss Maid, on the heels of Swiss Maid, Game of Stain, and finally M. Lotion. And that's the situation as they come now to the seven furlong point and start to turn right-handed and meet the slight rise as they come up towards the halfway stage of the race. And it's still out in front, Brown Proctor leading on Road to Glory. They're at the halfway stage now, six furlongs out in this King George. Road to Glory from Telescopico, right behind him in second. Ella Manamu is third, Troy is fourth. Then comes Chris May, Game of Sane and M. Lotion. The order has hardly changed from the start at the five furlong marker. And it's still Road to Glory out in front of Telescopico. Then Ella Manamu and Troy and Chris May, Game of Sane and finally M. Lotion. And they're coming now to the half mile marker. Four furlongs out, and it's still Road to Glory, out in front, by a length and a half, from Telescopico, Ella Manamu, a close third, in fourth place, towards the outside is Troy, M. Lotion has come through on the inside to take a good pitch, then Game of Stain, and finally Swiss Maid, and then into the straight, and Road to Glory is the leader from Telescopico, on the outside of him is Game of Stain, coming with a run, but Ella Manamu has now got into second place, and it's Ella Manamu that hits the front from Troy, beginning to get in the top gear, Game of Stain is chasing him there, now, into the last furlong and half, and it's Ella Manamu from Troy. Willie Carson now getting serious on Troy and goes for his whip, and Troy beginning to wear down Ella Manamu 
Game of Spain is still threatening in third place. Troy now hits the front. From Elamanimo, Game of Spain coming late. Hemlos are running on into fourth place. The coming to the last furlough. And it's Troy from Game of Spain for Bath putting in a brave challenge. But Troy lengthening his stride to win it by a length and a half from fast finishing Game of Spain. Elamanimo is third. Hemlos in his fourth. Kenneth Tropico is fifth. Road to Glory is sixth who's done his, well, his work so well, and the last to finish... Steps from the second great racing classic of Derby Week, the Oaks, presented the chance of a rare double. Trainer Dick Hearn offered his Derby-winning jockey, Willie Carson, the choice of three mounts this afternoon, and Carson chose Byrene. Peter Bromley is the commentator. Two furlongs out, the dancer and Byreem are first and second. Dick Hearn's pair have drawn clear of VL. Then comes Gift Wrap, quick as lightning, trying to get on terms, but he's short of speed at this stage, quick as lightning. And it's going to be one of Dick Hearn's, and it's Byreem that hits the front. And VL is hanging, and Byreem is going away from the dancer and VL. These three are clear of quick as lightning, who's finishing like a bomb, but it's going to be Byreem. Willie Carson has done the double. It's the first Derby and Oaks double for a trainer and jockey since 1957, besides earning Byreen's owner nearly £70,000. Another of Dick Hearn's horses, the dancer, which has only one eye, came third. And those pictures were by arrangement with independent television. And there was plenty of excitement in the King George VI chase at Kempton this afternoon. A 20-length lead by Anna Glog's daughter turned into a neck-and-neck -neck battle between three horses in the closing stages. Peter Bromley is the commentator. Silverback has Nightness again as a challenger. Nightness persistent on the stand side, but Silverback has the lead at the last. Silverback, Nightness is down. Nightness is down at the last. Anna Glove's daughter is the first year. Tommy Carmody nearly falls off. Perhaps he'll now put his stirrups down a bit. But Silverback is going to win it. Silverback wins for the second year running by about five lengths from Anna Glove's daughter. Diamond Edge runs on to be third, staying on. So a victory for the second year running for Silver Buck and the third year in a row for the jockey Tommy Carmody. Anna Glog's daughter was second at 5-1 to one, and Diamond Edge third at 11-4. to four. There is the leader with three furlongs to go. He's gone two lengths clear of Silver season and he's opening up a lead now. Shagar's going for the guns. He's gone four, five, six, seven, eight lengths clear. Shotgun swirls under pressure. Two furlongs out. The derby is the procession. Shagar is ten lengths clear. Scintillating air gets into second place. Search parade and shotgun. Vince of gold come next. There's only one horse in it. You need a telescope to see the rest. They have a problem to go. And Shagar is galloping them into the ground. Fifteen lengths at least. What is Swinburne looks round. He's on his own. Shagar, clear of his field. He's climbed this mountain. He has eased up. Shagar wins the derby. Vince of gold is second. Scintillating air is third. Shotgun four. Church for a five. Then sheer grid. Then comes Silver Season, the Derby Michael Phillips won with ridiculous ease. Well, Peter, a lot of us thought that he was a certainty, and my goodness gracious me, he was a certainty, as we all know now. The 203rd Derby, worth £150,000, was won in fine style by the favourite Golden Fleece, ridden by Pat Eddery. Two furlongs out, the Colt began his run, described by Peter Bromley. Golden Fleece is coming with a steady run on the outside. Two furlongs out. Norwick it is from peacetime, touching wood. And Golden Fleece comes smoothly through to take up the running. And it's Golden Fleece for Ireland. And with a furlong to go, it's going to be Golden Fleece for Ireland. They have a furlong to run. Touching wood, hanging on in second place. Norwick is third. And then comes Persepolis finishing foul. Golden Fleece is the one now that they've all got to catch. And Golden Fleece is going away. Golden Fleece wins the derby. In second place, touching wood. Silver Hawk and Persepolis third and fourth. No. Golden Fleece, owned by Robert Sangster, is the sixth Derby winner, trained by Vincent O'Brien in Ireland, and a second Derby winner for jockey Pat Eddery. And the result again, uh, first the favourite, Golden Fleece, three lengths ahead of Touching Wood, the third, Silverhawk, just edged out Persepolis. That's all from me. Breaking a 200-year-old record, and the rest of today's sport, here's Mark Austin. Yes, Lester Piggott has won the Holston Pill St Ledger at Doncaster on Comanche Run. It's his 8th St. Ledger and 28th classic victory and breaks the old record that stood for nearly 200 years. Peter Bromley describes the finish. And it's Comanche Run from Bay Noon who comes under the whip in second place and Lester has the lead on Comanche Run. Bay Noon running on strongly on the stand side suddenly. Shonazar's not out of it. Alpha Beijing coming late. A tremendous race between Comanche Run and Bay Noon. Comanche Run and Bay Noon. Comanche Run and Bay Noon. Comanche Run on the far side. Bay Noon challenging. Comanche Run is the winner! Bay Noon is second, Alpha Beta, and Crazy comes back. 
Comanche run won by a neck, and Alpha Beaton was a further length and a half behind. Two more ventures to jump, and Desert Orchid is beaten, I think. Yahoo is in the lead. Charter Party is third, and Travis Clown is a long way back for Yahoo and Desert Orchid are together. Desert Orchid back in contention. It's only going to be courage from here on in. Listen to the roars of the crowd. They're absolutely level. Charter Party in third place and up the hill. Yahoo on the far side. Desert Orchid, they're level. Desert Orchid won't get in. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage here in the winner's enclosure two of the great names associated with the derby over the last half a century, Lester Piggott and Peter Bromley. And Lester, if I could ask you to make a presentation to Peter, who this afternoon will commentate on his 40th and final Vodafone derby to crown a career that has spanned over 200 classics. His rumbling tones have taken racing around the world via BBC Radio, building to a now familiar crescendo, which never lacked in enthusiasm, drama and sensationalism. It has been a wonderful career. We wish you all the best this afternoon. The racing public and the BBC will miss you. Right, let's have a look at the soccer this weekend on ITV. The games between Aston Villa and Ipswich, Middlesbrough and Everton, Liverpool and Brighton, Bristol Rovers and Wrexham, Chelsea and Orient, Colchester and Brentford, Huddersfield and Bradford, Portsmouth and Walsall. You'll see the highlights of at least one of those games wherever you are. And that is all we have time for today. I hope that you've enjoyed sharing at least part of the afternoon with us. And you're all invited next week when we have soccer with On the Ball, the women's boat race, Oxford versus Cambridge, tennis and the final of the £150,000 Avon Women's Championship from Madison Square Garden, wrestling and another appearance of Big Daddy in tag, and an ITV7 that continues our coverage of the pick of the flat season at Salisbury with two big races, the 1,000 guineas and the 2,000 guineas trial stakes, and we have national hunt racing from air as well for an ITV7. I say goodbye, leaving you with King's Ride's triumph in the big race today, the William Hill Lincoln Handicap. From all of us on World of Sport, cheerio. Thank <laughs> you.